open and transparent trading area for cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody and welcome to my uh, November blog from Strasbourg. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all of those who've contacted me with concern about how I'm faring in Brussels this week. Obviously with all the news of lockdown, um, people are concerned. Good news is we're not in Brussels this week, this is a Strasbourg week, but of course uh, some of my staff are and uh, they report to me that it is a strange and surreal experience given the fact that uh, the streets are fairly empty. The Parliament is still operating, it's not one of the public entities that's closed down, although many people are working from home. But as of next week, the whole Parliament will be back in Brussels and it will be business as usual. Uh, business as usual I think is important because if we cut back on our activities, if we change the way that we operate our democracies, both in the European Parliament and indeed in national parliaments across Europe, we'll be giving a signal that terrorism has won, that they are capable of making us change our behaviour. OK, we're going to change our behaviour a little towards security. It's clearly tightened up. There's some, re some really big changes here in Strasbourg because, of course, Strasbourg in France, uh, the whole of France is on alert. But it, it, that's what we need to do to protect ourselves and, importantly, to protect our staff. But we don't need to shut down. We don't need to close off our democracy. We are an open democracy and we must make sure that we maintain those principles. If we don't, then they have won, and the message from the European Parliament. We don't often have a completely united message, but the message on this one is united, and it is. We will not be defeated by people who don't share our way of life, who don't understand our values, and don't share our aspirations. So, having said that, you can imagine a lot of uh, activity this month on the subject, not just of our personal security, that's almost incidental, but on how we're going to make sure that Europe remains an open society, how we're going to make sure that Europe remains united and we can make sure that terrorism does not thrive. We know that we have homegrown terrorists, both in, in France, in Belgium, in the UK, it's clear, and in other countries. And we have a piece of legislation going through the Parliament this week, which is about how we tackle um, the fundamentalism that's growing within our own populations. This has been reported by Rashida Dati, who is a centre-right MEP from France, so not part of President Hollande's ruling party, but the opposition. And uh, I, I don't know if any of you saw the piece on Rashida in the Times last week. Um, she has ambitions way beyond the European Parliament in French politics, so an interesting lady to watch. Interesting as well because of her background, which is North African Mus and from the Muslim community in North Africa, but very much an integrated member of French society. And some very interesting ideas uh, on which we largely agree in her report. So I commend that to you if you're going online, have a look at it, and you'll see some pretty sensible stuff there. Apart from uh, the security uh, issues, which I have to say has rather dominated this week, very interesting one for me, and a subject which I often speak about, is animal welfare. There's a motion to Parliament on animal welfare, uh, asking the Commission to come forward with new rules. And it's a very good illustration here of how we Conservatives operate in Europe, because we're not actually agreeing with that. We don't want new rules. But we're very clear that that doesn't mean to say that we're not interested in animal welfare. Of course we are. In fact, I believe the UK is at the forefront of welfare, particularly in agricultural practices. But what we're saying is we want to enforce the rules that we already have. We already have probably the most far-reaching rules, on, on, particularly on agricultural animal welfare, in the world. If only all member states were 100% implementing those rules. So what we're saying is come on EU, make sure the rules you already have are followed everywhere, that it's a level playing field, get that embedded, get that working, and then maybe we talk about augmenting it. But until we do, we simply cannot agree that we need to have more rules which people will ignore.
So that's the situation here in Strasbourg. I wish you all a very happy and, and good rest of November and look forward to speaking to you just before Christmas.